Hello, YouTubers. It's Travis. Welcome back. Uh, we're doing another best of three Innistrad Midnight Hunt draft here on MTG Arena. Have you ever had a particular card in a set that just keeps showing up? Like, you feel like you're seeing it more than you probably should be, and you're not sure why? Almost a mom, it followed me home, can I keep it sort of scenario? I mean, that's kind of happening to me, and I can't say that I mind. I hope you'll enjoy today's draft. Here's one where I think some people might be tempted to take the Moon Ranger Slash and say, I'll let all my neighbors fight over black. I don't think that's the right call. We need to see what's open anyway. So the question is, what's going to end more games? A morbid opportunist or a Lord of the Forsaken? I think the Lord of the Forsaken. I can find card advantage in other colors and on other cards. I can't find a six mana, six, six flying trample in this set other than this card. This is unique. So I think this is a pretty easy Lord of the Forsaken. If Black's up, we get to play it. That's cool. If it's not, we'll move along. It's all right. Well now. Someone didn't want the Mask of Gristlebrand. I'm happy to work with that. Maybe so. We will fight over Black then. I think while we can, and we certainly can here, I'm going to continue to just hug black and we'll figure out what the other color is and sort of go from there because I don't see any reason not to take the Midnight Ambush here. Yeah, here we've got a situation where the best two cards in the pack are the Alchemist and Candle Trap, but I'm still going to take the Siege Zombie. Uh, this will go nicely in a black deck. I, I am missing out on perhaps an enabler or perhaps a removal spell. <clears throat> I think it generally should be Atrelos, but I, I also think a lot of people misunderstand this card because I've heard some people say it's not that great putting it on decayed tokens and just drawing cards. And I'm like, okay, if that's what you think you're supposed to do with it, that's the thing you can do with it. <clears throat> But we're just going to take this to stay black. And again, we'll figure out what the other color is here in a minute. Um, options include, but are not limited to, taking this farmer. Green can usually get you some reasonably statted creatures to go with a Mask of Gristle brand. Like putting that on a 5-5 is pretty spicy. Good morning, Urberk. Yeah, that's what I use it for, Kenny. I think I like the farmer. We'll see the where this takes us. Like, I don't have to be doing that. I just have the option to be doing that. All right, so if we're basically just saying we're black here, which of these three cards would I rather have? Probably the Siege Zombie. Having two drops that do something later is kind of a big deal. I'm seeing some red open up, and I'm not taking it because, like, I want a four screen or something. I'm, I'm again, just trying to lean into the black cards and then sort out what else we're doing later. I can play this. Now we get to where we need to kind of think about which of the color pairs we'd like to go into. And if we're playing red, I don't mind having access to a Burn the Accursed. Although I guess I could just take Silver Bolt and main deck it and be pretty happy, huh? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I, I do like the Awakener, and we're going to take it here, but it's worth noting that there's the Liberator. This seems to be an indication to moi that nobody wants to play green. But if I can get a couple zombie tokens, and I should be able to find a couple zombie tokens, this dude will be pretty good. All right. 
We're, we're talking? Yeah, my intention is to be as open as possible as we go forward and figure out what color or colors we would like to get into. Like, this is probably just because blue is very deep. Not necessarily because it's very good, but... Could very well be blue-black here. Good morning, Cynic. So it's not really a black card to take. I don't think the third Siege Zombie with our current configuration is doing much. It's essentially Cathartic Pyre versus Locked in the Cemetery, and Cathartic Pyre is obviously a much better card. Oh yeah, I've had good success with Corpse Cobble. You need to be in, in blue-black, obviously. But the, the way to make it work is just to attack with a bunch of decayed tokens and then cast it after damage. I think we take the best card here and kind of see where this takes us. Because, like, I, I'm not opposed to playing these. I guess black is still open. So, sure, I'll do that. And we're still kind of, like, working through what we want to do here. Is this not really something on curve? So I've overall been very happy with the Augur of Autumn, too. <laughs> Thank you for the bit, Marton. Yeah, there was a slash, but when there's one card missing, I don't give that a lot of credit. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, I think the card advantage here is pretty nice. This is moving us, like, hard push towards green. But I can't really tell if green is open. But I have had some success with Bramble Armor. The auto-equip makes this not quite as bad as you might think. And we kind of just need to hit playables here. It's going to need to be green playables in this pack, which, good news, we're getting green playables in this pack. We should get the black ones in the next one. Black was very open the other way. I usually only draft with three packs. Yeah, this is looking pretty good so far. I dig it. I like Shadow Beast Siding a lot. I think I might just want a Blood Pack to try to kind of stay alive while we're getting all of this value going. Like, my removal suite isn't exactly where I'd like it to be. This isn't so much a signal, it's just, hey, nobody's drafting green, which is fine by me. I may end up needing to play a Might of the Old Ways. Oh yeah, the Shadow Beast is great with the Farmer, but, like, I think this deck just wants to stay alive and then cast a 6-drop and win. And the, the zombie kind of leads towards that plan. This leads towards the cast a six drop plan because it makes sure we're going to hit more land drops, which is good too. I, I don't think I need a lot more top end. And at 14 cards, yeah, we're fine. I can just take another three and play it if we need to. The strangler doesn't really seem like it's carrying its weight here. This could help out if we're looking to ramp and potentially if we're looking to splash. Like if I don't get any more interaction... It's possible we would splash a pyre. It's possible the deck would just want it anyway, because like we end up with double blacks and double greens all over the place. It's a 
like candle trap. I guess people don't like candle trap anymore. I have played Bramble Armor before, a lot more than I thought I would, because I didn't think I'd play it at all, and I think I've played it in two drafts out of a couple hundred, so I guess playing it 1% of the time is right. Dryad's Revival is interesting. It plays nicely with the farmer. The challenge is it's probably going to be getting back a creature in this deck, which I don't know that that's good enough. Good morning, Orcish Artillery. No, I don't have a choice for removal, though, and I do think it's the best card for us, so we take it and move, but I could use a Divinistrator, too. I think I'm supposed to take the wilds here, no joke. Like, I know the Grizzly Ghoul would be good in this deck. But again, double green, double black, double green, double black. Like, tons of mana sinks. We, we may very well end up running 18 lands. And there's a possibility it wheels too, but even if it doesn't, I think this is better for us. Like, just getting to cast these spells means we're probably going to win. Now, I, I could take this one too, but the interaction is the one thing we've really been missing. I think this is a very happy to find this Defenestrate. Not that one for one removal is everything, but my goodness, having a couple pieces of it sounds nice. Okay, we're starting to like settle in. And like I said, we're finding the, the black cards that we were interested in this way around. Now that I have the revival, I'm kind of interested in the second farmer because this starts to give me the, the reliability to hit the cards for these, which also pushes me a little further towards 18 lands. Nice. All right, I think we're going to get there just fine. Welcome to the party. I wouldn't mind another two. Like, we kind of got cut out of two drops. This isn't really a two drop. I can probably still play it. I also literally don't have any fours. I have to play a Bounding Wolf, which is kind of fine. Our early game's a little weak. It's going to be difficult to block early, but I guess we can just sort of consider these Midnight Ambushes two drops. Kind of have to. Could sort of play Crawl from the Cellar, too. I might at least like access to a... Good morning, Andy. And the Ghoul Wield. I don't have any four drops, so let's just plug that in there and call it a deck. We've only got three rares and two mythics, so I'm not quite sure if we read the table or not. I've cited this in more than I'd care to admit, and I've main decked it a good bit too. I think the candle guide's just kind of okay. Hey, there's another two drop. I wanted one of those. I, I can play that over what? And this deck, honestly, probably the duel for dominance. I think if we can stay alive, that's a good thing. I also really need to decide if I want to play 18 lands or not. We're going to dive deep on that. All right, so lots of things to think about here. Brownie is saying I'd be looking at Duel for Dominance, Silver Bolt, Candle Guide, and Bounding Wolf, even potentially a Crawl. So the, the main thing I want to do is figure out how I can get 18 lands in here and make sure that I have enough creatures. And I, I think I do have enough creatures with 16. That may even be too many. 
So the Ecstatic Awakener is predominantly good with zombie tokens, right? Like, I, I feel like that could actually be the cut. Which feels weird, but where are we getting something to sacrifice for him? Uh, we could, we're sort of happy to sacrifice the Strangler. Sort of happy to sacrifice the human token. That's kind of it, right? Do I need more? Or do we just play it anyway? Is Threat of Activation good enough? It might be. My one drop can't be good after I've drawn my six drop. Diagraph Bros could be a thing, sure. Hobbling Zombie Leftovers could be a thing. So cards on the chopping block are probably Bounding Wolf, which I think I want to keep. There's really no way to interact with anybody that's trying to fly over. Well, Mark of Gristlebrand would be good against them. But so with this, like, I, I think this might be our answer. It, it seems like I'm going to be light on things to sack to it prior to turn four or five, which means it's just going to sit there and not do a whole lot. If we're playing against somebody that's using candle traps or uh, locked in the cemeteries, I think in that case we might want, the, want it back in. But I think this gives me the best looking main deck I can get. And we can go a little heavier black and still basically be set, right? Yeah, we can go 9-8 and be good to go and still have a free Evolving Wilds for value. What's up, Professor Bear? Let's go win some magic. We should be good with this. It's not a bad start. Looks like it's going to be an interesting spring, Brownie. Are y'all? But things are good so far. Things are good. You reckon they gotta burn down the house and I'm walking right into it? Like, this is lethal. So they've either gotta burn down the house and I'll respond with the Diagraph Horde, or they're gonna play a blocker and I'll kill it. And they're dead. You would play Hob just in case? What is Hob?
horde? No, you definitely don't want to play the horde. If, if you think there's any possibility that they have a burn down the house, right? I've got lethal on board. So what are they going to do? They're going to play a blocker. Oh, I wouldn't play hob. Okay, good. Sorry, reading's hard. Then we agree. It's good. So we don't quite know what they're doing other than likely werewolving. To which I would say they're wolving. I suspect we're all right against that. I really need to see more of their deck than one card. Yeah, I, I would agree with you in that case, Brownie. Yeah, in red-green, they're likely to have more, but... We did. It's a significantly worse start here, uh, but with 10 black sources in the deck, I think this is acceptable. Because I've got those 10 uh, black sources to draw, as well as green two and three drops. And colorless cards. There's probably half of the deck that's acceptable to draw right now. this guy because he puts more power on the board. So after they use the 3D damage removal spell, we'll still have three power on board. It's cool. Okay. Bounding Wolf again. I think you gotta go, my friend. Like, I can almost attack into a 4 5 here and not care. It's been pretty good at being, uh, Three mana, three, two. Like, it ain't great. But it's aight. I'm doing this first so I can tap them to deal one extra point of damage if they block four lay here. And there's some chance they see it and just scoop. I like this block though. That block says, I just want to kill something on the way out. And that's relatable, I've been there. Oof. Right, let's go again.
I had a mighty thirst. Very well. I'd imagine the secrets of the key are that it unlocks something. Probably a 2002 Honda Odyssey. That's what Teferi's telling Arlen in this. It appears to attach to a minivan. Play 18 lands, he said. You'll have plenty of mana sinks. It'll be fine. It's not fine. I mean, if you're determined to get into somebody's car, you can make that happen. Well, that's going to need to die. I imagine they put the counter on the Outrider. Which means I get kind of extra value off of my Eden Alive. Now we're sort of racing. I just don't have anything left, but we got some good draws. <laughs> nice, Auntie. I thought you meant get into the car, not start the car. But yeah, it can be both. Por que no las dos? Alright, we're doing pretty good on the land front. I like it. And we still got one to play next turn. Free real estate. pitch lands in a geese weave mm -hmm. 
double outrider. We will kill it after we have taken this damage, because kill it we shall. But I don't need that counter getting on somebody. Well, I can't stop that counter from getting on somebody, but I cannot take the damage this turn. Because that may be the last turn we actually get to do something impactful other than play a land. <laughs> there is downside to playing 18 lands, and it is this. But to be fair, I've been perfectly capable of flooding out with 17 lands, even 16 at times. That sounds like a valid strategy, Scuzz. This will get us more lands, which is important. We need them. See, I told you we'd get more lands. I was not ready for their commando. This deck really wanted a bag of holding, eh? So it would be nice to hit Coven. I wonder if I was supposed to save the Evolving Wilds thinking that we might draw the Augur. I don't think so. At least we know we're drawing a good blocker. That's well. Yeah, I think I would too, Auntie. Sad. That's a good cemetery to be locked in. If we had a naturalize effect, I would bring it in here. We don't, which is unfortunate. But if we did, I would want one here. They've shown us two pieces of enchantment. Now, what that does get me thinking about is that Awakener dude we have. 
Because he could be particularly good here. And maybe sacrificing some stuff or whatnot. I figured they had a counter spell. I thought it might have been the pay for one, but it wasn't. Hello, Timba. We saw a lot of their dag. It's kind of medium creatures, decent removal, and counter magic, which uh, can make a dag. The one copy of Locked makes me kind of interested in the Awakener. Yeah, we drew too many lands. It is what it is, but it, it, it's like, what can we do with it? Like, I, I feel like the Candle Guide may be useful here for the Exile effect. And I feel like the Awakeners may be cute, but if I if I knew they were playing two Locked in the Cemeteries, I'd take it. And if I had a Naturalize, I would bring it in. I tend not to grab those very highly. Because you just don't see a deck doing what this one's doing that often. I do not main deck Awakener in every black deck. We had a long conversation about why I don't want it in this deck. The main thing being I don't have anything to sacrifice to it. I'm trying to decide what my cut is here, and I think it might be the Pestilent Wolf. I think I, I would main deck Awakener in most black decks. I'm assuming you've come in after we did the discussion about why it isn't in this one. But most black decks are going to have a handful of zombie tokens running around, and this one just doesn't. Which leaves us in kind of a weird spot. Like, we can play it on turn one, but then it doesn't do anything until I draw the Diagraph Ward? Or maybe Jaren is, like, the one of? That's not enough. Because I, I don't think the Awakener is just, like, a solid card overall. I think it's okay. I think it's the synergies with the um, Decayed tokens that make it quite good uh, in the format. If we can hit us a green land, I think we in business here. But I mentioned when we cut the Awakener, because I had it in the main deck until we went through and started talking about it, that I'd want to bring it in if somebody had a bunch of enchantment-based removal. So we know they have one copy of Trapped in the Cemetery. I'd like to know what else they got. So if we make it to a game three and see two copies of that, or just see another one, that may indicate that they have two copies. We could consider bringing it in. Eighteen lands, ladies and gentlemen. It's not fun when games come down to this, but it is a part of the game. We can still get out of it. Again, one green, I think, really turns this car around. Tis a slow green, but tis a green.
decent chance they dissipate this if they have it. And I'd like to encourage them to do so if they're holding a dissipate by making them think that I really need to hit the land. But it, it, it kind of turns into a win-win for us if they uh, don't counter it. Well, it's not a four mana four four, right? You you have to sacrifice something. So let's say we drew it on this board. What would we sacrifice? Like, look at various situations while we're playing it. I if it was just a four mana four four, I'd put it in every deck. The the reason that you can think that is because so many black decks have zombie tokens everywhere. But this one just doesn't. They're definitely sitting on Dissipate. I, I don't think we can actually win this. No, it's a four mana four four. It's one to cast and then three to activate. But you're saying you'd have to spend more mana to get the token. So yeah, that's fair. But like the, the, the play pattern I usually see is like turn one Awakener, turn two Startle, turn three Psyche and start hitting you for four. And that can be very scary. I can maybe sneak in a two spell turn. I just can't do anything with it. Like they shouldn't counter this. I'm gonna see if they will. Yeah, unfortunately they know what they're doing and I, I can read them like a book, but there's nothing I can do about it. You have a dissipate. We both know you have a dissipate. Just go ahead and dissipate it. Yeah, and this is just not that deck as the challenge. So that's why it's not in this deck. That's the thing with synergy cards. Like, I, I think you could put Awakener into a lot of formats and it wouldn't be very good. But it's very good here because of all the zombie tokens. So it's worth noting when you have an Awakener and a deck that it's actually not good in. I don't think I can beat another counter spell, so we're gonna assume they don't have one. All right, so we've been gotten. I was not ready for that cover up. Well, right now I would love to have one, right? Because it would help me kind of sneak around all these counter spells. I was not ready for the second cover up. Kind of does suck to lose the entirety of this battle due to counter spell or not counter spell mana screw because the counter spells don't do anything if I'm not mana screwed. I'm glad you like the card. It does not belong in this deck. I will not be saying anything else about it. I've got like half an option here, don't I?
I also think the cards find enough balance that you can just throw it in every black deck and it's fine. But looking for those little edges where you don't want to play a card that's traditionally good, or you do want to play a card that's traditionally bad, will give you those few percentage points you need. Could be a good lunchtime topic. Yeah, I think if we hit those land drops a little sooner, we're fine. So that one was a bit of candy land going on there. All right, let's see if we can get a 2-1 out of it. And I think thinking around those heuristics can be good for you. Pseudo cactus. Which is a fine way to play the game if you are playing for fun. What spots got you covered, Tommy? I was going to ask you something, and then I forgot what it was. But I remember saying to Sim Wife yesterday, I'll ask Tommy that next time I see him. And now I've completely forgotten what it was. I think that might be too narrow of an opinion too, Rage. I think that card is good when you have things to sacrifice, which happens a lot in black-white sacrifice decks and blue-black decayed decks, but it could also happen in this deck too. Like, I, I can envision green-black decks that do have plenty of things to sacrifice to him. This just isn't one of them. So I think it's far less likely to be good here. But it could be, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Dude, nice. Thank you for the resub. Y'all spam some cats for Dude. Nice. We're just going right in, eh? talking about sauna and I remember her saying that people in Finland must need sauna and salmiaki because it's always cold and their noses are running which I was like yeah that 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 clogs yeah I know saunas for naked people we learned that startled.
So the fins just never get runny noses? That's crazy. What's up, photos? It's not too bad. This is not my favorite draft set, and I think it's on average a little worse than previous offerings. But I'm still having a good time. Tar, alcohol, and sauna don't fix it. The sickness is deadly. Nice. I'm glad you're having a good time. That does not sound like something I would enjoy. But to each their own. Do what makes you happy. Nice. Congrats. We ain't got to do nothing. Just fight it. Like, this guy just kills it. I don't imagine I'd drink it if y'all did. Oh, throwing a barn out a window. I guess that is a bit of a fun thought. I don't really know what they're up to other than Boo Black. I have no reason to think it's not a decent Blue Black deck. I just I, I don't have a mind to sideboard yet because I, I don't know what their goal is. Everybody grab a leg. So they mold the five. There's a theory out there, Rachel, that um, out of pod play is part of what makes drafting different these days than it used than how it used to be. And I, I do overall think pod play is great if you can make it happen. It's just not worth, it's not worth it. Do 
they get back into this, it's going to be through that sage. So I do want to kill the sage. I just not like to two for one myself to do it currently. Because they almost assuredly should have passed here if they're not doing anything else. Maybe they're holding up a flip the switch. That kind of makes sense. Okay. What? I was actively scared of that card. So they were just looking to throw something away. I mean, they could have just gotten some of this crap back. Here we are. I'm holding this just in case they have the discard two spell because I don't want to discard the hunt master. This thing's pretty good. Although I have managed to two one with it today, which, you know, I'm pretty happy about. Presumably some kind of bolus. By Augur of Autumn for lethal. I'll take it. I think if we hadn't had those mana issues, we could have had that one. I still think looking back, that was a reasonable adjacent keep. Both times we flooded, we got screwed, it happened. It's interesting too that like our first pick literally never drew it. I don't think we ever saw Lord of the Forsaken. I frankly forgot that it was in the deck. We also never saw Mask of Crystal Brown. So, like, these were two cards we were excited about drafting, and nothing. They weren't in the deck, functionally, right? Also never saw the Dryad's Revival. Interesting. Saw a lot of lands, though. You know what I like better than the pack leader? My patrons. Thank you for supporting the work that I'm doing here on YouTube. Paul, Jesse, Punk, Rusty, Adrian, Hero, Joe, Jesse, Jacob, Scott, Fasty, and Welcome Rich. Thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link below to take you to my Patreon. Uh, you'll get some cool rewards as well as seeing your name up here in lights. Thank you all very much. We'll see you next time.